in a world filled with biased critics and judgmental movie fans, one man has the courage and the decency to right the wrongs of so many reviewers before him. This is Mike Duke's Passable Movies. This has been a long time coming. Welcome, viewers and subscribers of the Rebel 180 channel, to the very first episode of Mike Duke's Passable Movies. I, of course, am the always outspoken Mike Duke. Originally, I uh, started out um, in mid-2011 with a show called PIYP. It was the very first uh, Rebel 180 YouTube series back when this channel was first created. Uh, it was the it was the second of many videos that would uh, be created by uh, the uploader. And so now that that's out of the way. The movie that I'm going to review is Monster Brawl. It is sort of a genre mix between monster movies and pro wrestling movies. Uh, it is... Uh, it takes place in a Michigan graveyard where the groundskeeper warns the uh, announcer team that there is a huge um, that there is some sort of evil coming and that they need to clear out. They heed, they do not heed the warning of the groundskeeper and they continue on with the show and uh, this movie features people such as Former WWE superstar Kevin Nash, UFC referee Herb Dean, and the mouth from the South, Jimmy Hart. And Jimmy Hart interview, interviews the creator of Monster Brawl, a, re, a amateur wrestling promoter. And he tells the story about how he loved watching monster movies and he loved pro wrestling and he wanted to put he wanted to put those two things together and Jimmy Hart just looked completely baffled and bored throughout this entire interview. I don't know if it was a lack of acting skills or if he just didn't care or if he's so good at acting that it makes it look like he sucks at acting. I don't know, but it's kind of weird. And so uh, they continue on with the first match of Monster Brawl, which features the Cyclops versus Witch Bitch. And the Cyclops in this movie is a mythical man he is a man who traded his eye, one of his eyes, to the, uh, to the Lord of the Underworld, Hades, so that he could foretell the future. 
it shows some training segments, you know, all that. And then there's a uh, witch bitch who is terrorized, who was being terrorized by ta the townspeople of the village she was in, and she is approached by an acne-faced troll known as the Grub. And this, and this man tells her that he can train her to fight. And so at the end of uh, her uh, vignette, it shows her uh, fighting one of the townspeople, and she kills him, and, you know, whatever. And so the match uh, starts, and referee Herb Dean is killed during the match. He does not even last the first match. That is one of the uh, that is one of the few things I have against this movie. Uh, that is one of the very few things that I have against this movie. That they didn't even allow him to uh, officiate any other matches except for half of that match. And the grub interfered d during this match. And, um, you know, this all started because of the grub. Herb Dean uh, got in the way, got his throat cut up, you know, cut open sliced open, if you will, whatever, got his throat slit due to a meat cleaver, uh, and which bitch was the one holding the meat cleaver, um, you know, there was one point where she got hit with a sledgehammer, well, not really a sledgehammer, more like a, you know, ball, ball peen hammer or whatever, and, uh, then, um, uh, she tries gouging out the Cyclops' eye. It, do, it doesn't work. And the Cyclops uh, defeats her due to a laser beam eye blast and melts her face off. The Grub tries to avenge her and he himself is killed because he gets his head punched off. Now, the commentary team of this movie is Buzz Chambers and Sasquatch Sid Tucker. Now, Buzz Chambers and Sasquatch Sid Tucker are pretty much um, knockoffs. They're pretty much ripoffs of the commentary team of Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole. If you watch the movie and see them interact with each other, you can tell off the bat who they uh, resemble, who they are trying to act like, pretty much. And, um, you know, Buzz Chambers is an alcoholic, um, you know, all this stuff. And um, the second match is Lady Vampire versus The Mummy. Now, uh, uh, Buzz Chambers says he's hated mummies all his life, and, um, uh, you know, he doesn't say it, but, um, Sid Tucker just looks at him, really, out of all the monsters you're being, you're, out of all the monsters you're being prejudiced toward the mummy. It's like, you know, all of the monsters are grotesque in their own way, but apparently he has a problem against mummies. He doesn't explain why, but, um, so, uh, the match goes on, and, um, the mummy, the mummy is said to be a mummified, uh, pharaoh named King Kafra, who was a vicious ruler in Egypt. Um, and Lady Vampire, uh, resides, uh, resided, in, in the movie she resides in the, um, uh, home of Vlad the Impaler, which leads me to suspect that she was a descendant of his. 
Vlad the Impaler, of course, is the um, is a was a vicious and ruthless dictator who was suspected to be a vampire, and he would send a message to his enemies by um, taking his victims and he would impale them on a stake. Uh, he would he would uh, impale them in between the legs and leave them on top of a stake, a, a wooden post, if you will, a giant stake. And he would just leave them there to send a message to his enemies. <clears throat> and so uh, I thought, now I thought the uh, person who played Lady Vampire was an actual pro wrestler because she had the look and she also had the moves and the athleticism. But it turns out she's only known for, uh, you know, a couple movies. One being Extreme Xmas, which I have no idea what that is because I've never actually watched it. I've only, I've, I only know about it because I looked her up on IMDb and found nothing. Uh, so, uh... You know, there aren't any actual big names other than the three that I named at the beginning. Uh, so, um, um, you know, uh, Lady Vampire ends up winning due to a uh, black heart removal. Uh, very intense uh, matchup between uh, those legendary... Uh, creatures, whatever, um, you know, and uh, the fourth, uh, the third matchup, I should say, the third matchup is between Werewolf and Swamp Gut. Uh, now, uh, Swamp Gut had sort of a uh, documentary type vignette where um, where a man was talking about how the swamp gut would hunt for those who would canoe in his waters and how there's only like 10 of them left. And, um, you know, uh, Werewolf is a man who I uh, had his wife taken away from him um, because she was attacked by a vampire. No, a werewolf. She was attacked by a werewolf. I'm sorry, I was still thinking about the Lady Vampire match. Uh, she was attacked by a werewolf and killed. So he seeks vengeance. And he tracks the werewolf down and kills it. But not before it bites him and turns him into a werewolf himself. And so, and so these two monsters are going at it, and things seem to uh, look bad for werewolf, but he starts to punch uh, Swamp Gut's enormous gut, and then, uh, you know, after that, he uh, he punches him so hard that Swamp Gut collapses, and then he does a huge, uh, big body splash from the top rope that just causes Swamp Gut's entire stomach to explode and kills him instantly. And so, uh, the undead matchup, uh, in the, uh, fourth match, yeah, the fourth match in the undead matchup is, again, is between, 
Zombie Man and Frankenstein. Now, Zombie Man is pretty much uh, managed by Kevin Nash's character, Colonel Cruikshank, who has been training him for 10 years, and now he's ready to show off his ultimate weapon. <laughs> and, uh, and Frankenstein is... Uh, managed by his maker, Dr. Frankenstein, or as they call him in the movie, uh, Igora. And so, uh, during the match, Igora uh, interferes and uh, knocks, you know, knocks, um, he knocks Frankenstein, no wait, Zombie Man. He knocks the Zombie Man upside the head with a foreign object, and then uh, Crewshank, Colonel Crewshank, becomes furious at that, and so he retaliates by killing um, uh, killing Igora by. Uh, sticking a hatchet into his back and this furiates uh, Frankenstein Frankenstein's monster uh, for the people who uh, seek to educate us or as you know as or as um, Sid Tucker says Frankenstein's monster if you want to be a dick about it. But anyways, Frankenstein becomes furious, beats the holy crap out of Zombie Man, and ends up crushing his skull. Now this apparently triggers a um, anomaly. It apparently causes the dead to rise and seek vengeance on Frankenstein. They end up, although they end up attacking Crushank for some reason, and they also sneak into the commentator's booth and bite, one of them bites Sid Tucker on the hand. And um, before the zombie, before the undead creature could finish, Sid Tucker off. Buzz Chambers saves him by um, by uh, knocking the zombie on on the head, and then uh, Sid Tucker finishes off by shooting it with a magnum. But unfortunately for Sid Tucker, his fate has been sealed. And so the final matchup is between the winner of the Creatures Conference heavyweight matchup and the winner of the Undead Conference heavyweight matchup, Werewolf versus Frankenstein. Now this had a very good false finish where it looked like Frankenstein had won uh, by crushing uh, by crushing Werewolf's skull due to a huge headbutt to the forehead, that is. But then later, Werewolf comes back, does a double axe handle, catches Frankenstein off guard, then he starts wailing on him, and then he starts slamming tombstones on him, and right when it looks like Frankenstein is... Uh, done for, he comes back with a uh, huge choke slam and ends it by taking uh, the bottom and top part of Werewolf's mouth and ripping his head, splitting his head apart. And the thing I don't, and another thing I really don't like about this is that they ended it with a cliffhanger. Now, I'm not going to say 
what the cliffhanger is, you're going to have to find out by yourself. But I highly recommend this if you are a monster movie fan or a pro wrestling fan, or if you're both, like me. Um, I give this movie a 9 out of 10 because of uh, a few parts that I didn't quite like. Uh, like uh, the fact that they, like the fact that um, Sid Tucker got zombified and had to be put down by Buzz Chambers. And, you know, the cliffhanger ending, that, that kind of sucked. It, there needs to be a sequel of this. Make this a sequel. Out of all the movies that get sequels that they do not deserve, this one should be one of the ones that gets a sequel it does deserve. This should be one of the deserving movies that actually gets a sequel. So, um, I am Mike Duke. Please rate and comment. Give me your thoughts about uh, this review. Tell me if I did a good job or not. And um, I will see you in July when uh, Mike Duke's Passable Movies returns. Catch you later.